If you are coming from other operating systems such as macOS or Windows and are into content creation, chances are good your favorite editor might not be available on Linux. In this video I'd like to give you a short overview on what editors are available on Linux and what to expect from those, like what they are doing well and what not so well, and where is proven for improvement. With this said, let's jump right into it. DaVinci Resolve I'd like to begin with DaVinci Resolve, which is a commercial video editor some might already know or already use. DaVinci Resolve is one of the only few professional video editing tools available for Linux natively. If you are already using this software, you can just continue where you left it. The workflow of the software itself is exactly the same. All in all, DaVinci Resolve is a very advanced video editor and aimed at professional use. It offers dedicated color grading tools and advanced video effect pipelines called Fusion. For new users, the amount of features might be a little overwhelming, but once you get the hang of it, it's a very smooth ride. However, there are some things I'd like to mention when running DaVinci Resolve on Linux. Codec support. Audio and video codec support of DaVinci Resolve on Linux is very limited to say at least, both for decoding and encoding videos. This means you cannot throw any video or audio file at DaVinci Resolve and expect things to work. In fact, you pretty much need to convert all your raw media before importing them into the software. To mitigate this issue, I personally use a command line script to convert a whole directory full of video files into Resolve compatible formats. In case you want to use the script, you can find a link in the video description to download the file. The script will convert all video files into Apple ProRes and PCM audio, as these do work just fine. However, the converted files will be very huge afterwards. Also, I do recommend using an SSD to store your video footage as HDDs will be too slow to stream the data into Resolve during editing and rendering the video, resulting in a bottleneck. Installation The installation of DaVinci Resolve can be tricky depending on your distribution of choice. Officially, it does only support Rocky Linux and CentOS, but it is very much possible to run the software on other Linux distributions as well. For example, in this video you see it running on OpenSUSE Eon using a Rocky Linux container underneath. For detailed installation instructions, feel free to check out my dedicated tutorial video on how to best install DaVinci Resolve on Linux. Paywall While not a surprise for commercial editors, DaVinci Resolve comes with two versions, free and studio. While the studio version is available as a one-time purchase costing 276 Euro or 295 dollars and apparently the studio version has more features over the free version. Hardware acceleration While DaVinci Resolve has very good hardware acceleration support using your GPU, it also will require a compatible GPU to even launch. This means you need closed source GPU drivers for your AMD or Nvidia hardware, otherwise the software will refuse to work. DaVinci Resolve Test Edit Rendering a 2.5K test video took about 2 minutes. While Resolve distributed the work across the CPU and GPU at the same time, CPU was tanked close to 100% full time and the GPU was utilized at around 86%. The RAM usage of my system during the process was rather low, with only 7GB used during the entire process. Lightworks Another commercial video editor which is available for Linux is Lightworks. It is aimed at professional use and has a wide variety of audio and video codec support. Also, it supports using your GPU for faster rendering and working with your project. It allows for keyframing most of its video effects for you to do some animations within the editor. Lightwork is a very advanced editor which might cause new users to feel overwhelmed by its features. It is available in the DEP and RPM packaging formats. Also, unlike DaVinci Resolve, Lightworks can make use of open source GPU drivers just fine. So, no matter if you are using proprietary drivers for the likes of Nvidia or open source GPU drivers for the likes of AMD, Lightworks can benefit from both. However, Lightworks comes with view caveats which actually are not exactly limited to the Linux version. Paywall A lot of additional features, audio, video effects or even supported video formats for exporting your final video are locked away if the user has no other but the free license. Paid subscription ranging around from 9 euros or 10 dollars up to 191 euros or 240 dollars depending if you choose a monthly or even a yearly subscription plan. Or you choose a one-time purchase license which costs around 134 euros or 144 dollars up to 299 euros or 321 dollars. This however does not really come as a surprise for a commercial video editor to be fair. Workflow Lightworks overall workflow is somewhat different from other video editors shown in this video and it might require some time to get used to it. But no worries, Lightworks itself has very good and comprehensive video tutorials available to help get you started. Lightworks Test Edit 
As I used the free plan of Lightworks, exporting the test video was limited to 720p 16fps. Rendering the footage to this format took around 4 minutes. Most of the work was distributed to the GPU, while the CPU remained at around 20% load. My entire system consumed around 20 GB of system memory during the process. Kaden Live Kaden Live is a free and open source video editor made by the KDE project, those guys behind the Windows like Linux desktop Plasma. It is a very feature rich and easy to use editor with support for mere any kind of video formats. If you are coming from other commercial video editors, it might take a little time to get used to the different workflow. Kdenlive even allows you to use a GPU to export your video files. Another nice feature of Kdenlive is that it allows you to organize your project files in a directory structure. Also, Kdenlive has dedicated audio mixer and color grading tools for a little more professional workflow. Performance Sadly, Kdenlive has one major downside – performance. Both doing editing and rendering videos, while the resource utilization remains very low even if hardware acceleration using the GPU is enabled. To gain back a little performance in the editor, you can lower the resolution of the preview, but this does not help with rendering the final video, of course. Kdenlive Test Edit Rendering a 2.5k test video took around 18 minutes, while the CPU and GPU usage was extremely low. Even that I was using hardware acceleration to render on the GPU. As the GPU support is still experimental, I also ran the render on CPU with similar results and render times. My entire system consumed around 10 GB of memory during the process. Flowblade Flowblade is another free and open source video editor for Linux. It also can work with all sorts of video and audio formats and is very easy to use. Its interface and workflow is a little bit closer to commercial video editors which might flatten the learning curve in order to get used to it. Performance as like Kdenlive, also Flowblade shares similar performance issues. Work is not properly distributed across multiple CPU cores and GPU remains barely used. Flowblade Test Edit Exporting my 2.5k test video took Flowblade around 29 minutes, while consuming around 10 GB of RAM. CPU and GPU usage was obviously rather low with 28% CPU and 70% GPU, even though GPU acceleration was used for rendering the final video. Shotcut Shotcut is also a free and open source video editor and supports a wide variety of video formats for both exporting and importing media. Furthermore, it also has support for hardware accelerated rendering using the GPU. Its interface and workflow might be a little different from other editors, but you get the use to it pretty quick. Performance Just as like Kaden Live and Flowblade, so does Shotcut suffer from performance issues by not utilizing the system resources to its full extent, as well as not making proper use of the GPU if hardware acceleration is enabled. In case of Shotcut and Kaden Live, this might be to be blamed on the library called Melt, as this is what both applications use to render their videos. So if it is a Melt issue, all editors using this library will suffer from similar performance problems. Shotcut Test Edit Exporting the 2.5k test video took about 80 minutes, while the CPU and GPU usage was rather low, with 23% CPU and only 6% GPU usage. During the entire process, my system consumed to launch 13GB of RAM. Open Shot Another relatively easy to use free and open source video to editor is OpenShot. This editor comes with a wide range of codec support and can make use of your GPU as well. Its interface is rather simple and aimed at new users which like to edit some holiday or family videos quick, but it is pretty much capable of more advanced editing as well. OpenShot allows for keyframe nearly any property of a video clip or filter applied to these. Unlike other free open source editors mentioned in this video, OpenShot did have noticeably less performance issues while falling short in other areas, like its raw feature set or sometimes quirky workflow. Workflow The workflow might be a little strange to most users and sometimes editing certain properties is not very precise, which might also confuse new users is the fact that changing properties of a video track or effect of such recreate a new keyframe just at the location of the timeline cursor. This means it could happen that you accidentally create some animations where you just wanted to mute an audio clip or positioning an overlay or modify a property of an effect to a fixed value. OpenShot Test Edit Rendering a 2.5k test video took about 8 minutes, while it was very light on CPU and GPU usage, but consumed nearly all of my system memory during the process. Most of the work was done by the GPU using the NVIDIA encoder, which comes as a surprise considering that the resource usage was rather low and still it managed to export the video relatively quick. Summary All in all, there are plenty of good options for video editing on Linux which should suffice for most users. Be it content creation on social media or just editing some family videos, Linux should be able to provide you with what you need. 
Even with the likes of DaVinci Resolve and Lightworks, Linux might be suitable for professionals and their needs, if no other software is missing, of course. What do you think about Linux and video production? Are there any sore spots you feel like need to be fixed or do you feel like Linux is video production ready? I hope you found this video helpful and we'll meet in another video. Wish you a nice day and happy editing!